Hey folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Spring is finally in the air. Here in North Carolina where I live in the Piedmont of North Carolina, we're starting to get a touch of that warm weather, that 60s and 70 degree weather. We have a sense of urgency now. We've got to get out here and we've got to prune our fruit trees, okay? And this tree is a kefir pear tree. So we're going to give you a basic run around here in the orchard and give you some ideas, some basic thought processes on how we or I prune the fruit trees here on the farm. We've got about 65 fruit trees now here on the farm and I'll pick the camera up and show you. We've got the beginnings of a beautiful, wonderful orchard for our family to eat fruit off of for years to come. This is for homesteading. This is not for production. This is for homesteading. This is for making our own cider, making our own vinegars, making our own wine, having fruit here on the farm for us to eat. And plus, when I ride down through here on the lawnmower, I can grab me a delicious pear or a peach or an apple or a plum. It's awesome. So come on along today and we'll show you a little bit of basic backyard fruit tree pruning. All right? Let's have some fun. Woo! Stony Ridge. Farm Stony Ridge. Stony, Stony Ridge Farm. So first things first, let's talk about Woo! the trees, okay? Now this is a pear tree right here, and I'm going to show you the limbs that we don't want. The things that we don't want, just give you a basic rundown of information that you need to know for pruning your trees, and this will pertain to pruning your trees in the winter, in the late winter. You can look at the trees now and tell that they're not even starting to bud. This is the perfect time. There are not a lot of pests, and the risk for the tree getting some sort of infection or disease is pretty low this time of year. So as we look at the tree here you can see several branches that are growing inward. We want to get rid of those and branches that are touching one another that will end up eventually rubbing one another. Those are not beneficial branches, okay? We also want to look at the angle at which these branches come out. We don't want a very sharp angle. We want the angle to be somewhere near a 90 degree angle. The closer to a 90 degree angle, the better off it will be. So what you need to know is a wintertime pruning promotes growth and a summertime pruning retards growth. So here we have an example of a tree with the branches coming off just like it should, coming out to the side almost at a 90 degree angle. This one's coming out nicely. The central leader right here is growing good. And if you go around the tree, you can see that this branch right here may be a weak point, but we'll have to see as time goes on. When you're trimming major limbs off like this, you need to be thinking, is this limb shading the limb below it? No, it's not. Is this limb shading any limbs? No. Is this limb shading any limbs? Well, we've got a little bit of an issue here. So we've got a little rot going on right here. Um, you can see that right there. So I think we're gonna take this guy out or at least cut this one back because this one is going to shade this limb. And you can see the deer have damaged my trees a little bit here too. Now as you look at the tree further, you can see that this is growing over top of this guy. And this one is growing inward. We want to open the tree up and bring more light into this tree so that we have more fruit. More light means more limbs, means more fruit, means a better growing tree and we want healthy trees. These trees are all within two to three years old or within two to three years of planting. Coyotes, there's coyotes back here. So guys, we've been having a lot of trouble with coyotes lately. That rooster crowing might have got them called in. I got my pistol with me today. We've been having some serious coyote problems. They've been trying to get in the chicken coop at night. The dogs are barking at them, so. I hear them, they're, they're probably 300 yards away uh, through the woods. But anyway, let's, let's get back to it. By the way, a guy gave me this, this holster. It's from Cold War Concealment. It's a local company right here in North Carolina. It's called Cold War Concealment. He makes custom holsters. Here, I'll show it to you again. He makes custom holsters. This is a Smith & Wesson M&P 9mm. I like it. He can do all kinds of custom colors. Anyway, back to the fruit trees. So there are several different schools of thought on trimming a tree. There's the central leader method where one central leader goes up. And then there's the open center method where you're trimming the tree back so that it 
is open in the middle and shoots off large limbs kind of curling up. We really need to go to the orchard and have the orchard guy explain it to us. But for now, I just want to walk you through what I'm going to do. So if you're going to trim your own fruit trees, there are a couple tools that you're going to need to take along with you. We're going to need this little guy right here. It's a Corona. It's called a razor tooth saw and basically it's for getting your larger limbs. I don't know that we'll need that today because our trees are fairly young and fairly new. And also, this is the Corona brand and it's really, really good. This is the third pair that I own. I keep one in the Gator, I keep one in the truck. I keep tools on the truck because you never know when you'll need this guy or this guy to get something out of your way on a farm road. So I keep the tools on the truck. But this is a Corona brand also. And, and these guys are just, farm essentials things to have I'll post links down below to these tools tried and true trusted this guy especially is a very trusted tool here on the farm that thing is heavy heavy duty all right so let's get busy and I'll show you trimming a tree because that's what you're here for right all right let's examine this tree see these branches these low branches they're just no good for anything they're just energy sucking branches so we're gonna go ahead and we'll get our cutters and we'll snip those off okay we're gonna cut back here. See there are growth rings right here and that's where the hormone is, the growth hormone in the tree. If you cut it here, that is gonna cause new growth. If you cut it back here, you get in that growth ring and you cut off that new growth. Now you're gonna think I'm scalping this tree, but if you look here, you can see there are three major branches. One, two, three and they're all coming off at the correct angles that we want there's also another one here but this angle this crotch angle right here is just a little tighter than what you see here okay i'm going to leave this guy this year and i'm going to take this one out because this limb here will shade that limb so let's cut him out now with these apple trees i don't want a shoot shooting up to the sky here I want to be able to pick my apples so we're going to do a drastic cut right here and we're going to get rid of this guy I'm going to get rid of that central leader right there because I want this tree to bloom out like that, okay? So that I can walk all the way around it and pick my apples. I'm get rid of these little dudes. Now I'm going to cut this one because the crotch angle is just way too tight, okay? I'm going to cut him off. All right. Then I'm going to go right above this little growth ring area where the growth hormone is, and I'm going to cut right there. Boom. I took that central leader off. And we'll also get this guy right here. Now, look at this tree. It's really lopsided. So, let's go on and get in here and take that guy off. And then this guy, I think, will be okay. And then that's appropriately trimmed, lopsided tree. Now, here's an example of a pear tree that's just overcrowded. Look at this guy right here. See how that's rubbing up against there? we got to get rid of that. It's just growing. This actually comes up off and grows toward the inside. So we want to get rid of this whole limb right here, okay? We want to cut him way back, all the way back to here. And ugh, these cutters really do a good job. Yeah, get that guy out of there. Now, see this guy? He's crossing over too, okay? I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because it's rubbing right there. And we want to get rid of any diseased or broken branches. Another point to make, if you're going tree to tree and you don't want to spread disease, it's a good idea to have a rag with you. And basically you can take that rag or take a coffee cup and pour some rubbing alcohol in there and clean your clippers in between. So clean your pruners in between trees if you suspect any disease. Because if you don't, and it has blight on it, you can move it from tree to tree to tree. Let's look at another tree. Look at how busy this tree is. Look at how many branches we have here. We have a lot of growth in this tree, and we don't need that much growth, okay? So we're gonna take out most of these low, low, low branches, and we're gonna leave probably four or five of the major branches with the right crotch angle. Starting down low here. We'll get a little snipping going on. Something you need to think about when you're doing your trees in your orchard is this is your tree and you have artistic freedom to make it grow however you want it to grow. So if you want it to grow out and go, you can do that. You can do whatever you want to with your tree, but you need to open up all these branches. We're going to have to take some out so we can open it up and promote growth and get the tree to grow the way we want it to grow.
there's no real wrong way but you'll learn over time what you did wrong and hopefully you'll learn from it so the next time you do your fruit trees you'll learn a little bit more now I'll trim my trees probably a little bit different than you'll trim your trees and a pro orchard guy will probably trim them a little bit different I suggest you go online and you watch a bunch of videos okay pile all that knowledge before you go out and you cut your fruit trees take yourself some notes and get out there and work and have some fun and enjoy your life be outside it's beautiful out here today in our beautiful orchard and I'm really happy to share it with you guys so the major take-home messages here are when you trim trim the ones that have the sharp crotch angle you're shooting for a 90 degree almost crotch angle if something is really tight it's gonna make a weak spot and that branch is gonna crack and break at some point get the crisscross growth out all that crisscrossing growth anything that's touching any inward growth you want to get rid of that inward growth if you have to cut the top out of the main leader the central leader of the tree be sure you leave about that much about three buds on it so that in the springtime or in the summertime it starts to grow outward like that so that's it you want to have a beautiful orchard make it your own get out there and trim your trees get out there and trim your bushes make your place look beautiful do something that'll make you proud i'm gonna get busy i got about three hours worth of trimming to do and about 20 minutes worth of sunlight left time to get busy guys thanks a lot i hope you learned a little bit be sure you clean your tools in between your trees click the like button subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed and if i see a coyote i'm gonna leave the camera rolling and i'm gonna bust his butt because we got coyote problems here on the farm thanks a lot guys Thanks. Be sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Click the little bell down there and share this on social media. It'll really help the channel out. It'll help me grow. All right. Thanks for coming to the Stony Ridge. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge.